Kingsman the Golden Circle. Now imagine you have James Bond and you mix that with Spy Kids. That this movie. You remember Spy Kids? Yeah, they made four of those. I think. If you've seen any advertisements for this film in the last like five months, you already know like a major twist, which even in the film, you just kind of didn't really care about. Um, but yeah, the trailer, if you saw the trailer, you, you've seen the movie. And that's, that's not good. That's not good at all. Where we pick up with this film, uh, Eggsy, played by Taron Egerton, he's, you know, coming into his own as a, you know, a King's Men, a Secret Service agent that works uh, in, in the shadows of London. And while the first film acted as an origin story, this is more of a, well, kind of a lackluster episode, really. Where the first film had a great villain, this film has Julianne Moore not doing anything at all. She plays, I, I don't know what she, what's, what's her goal? Don't, don't really understand it. Um, they try to explain, but it just doesn't make any sense. Most of the characters in this film are likable enough. I mean, you know, they, they exist. In this one, like, Exy was kind of just, he's just like a normal character. The first one, he was kind of like, you know, this dude from the streets. Uh, he, he was a troublemaker. And then he, he kind of shifts into this like heroic, not heroic, I mean, I mean, more likable character. But in this one, he just doesn't do much. And the real kicker in this film is that you just don't care about almost any character. You actually don't care about any character. I gotta be honest. Like if something happened to Eggsy, you'd be like, oh my God, what? But anyone else is like, they just, they are there along for the ride. If they die, whatever. And something happens in the first like 10 minutes of this film that for any other film would be, you know, devastating and traumatic and all. It, they kind of just go past it. Like any sort of like loss in this film is just not very, I don't know. You just don't care. And really like that's kind of strange because like the fate of the world in these films is, is in the balance. And you're kind of like, well, it's, all right. I mean, I'm, I, we know they're going to save the world. A lot of people have been saying that there's just a ridiculous amount of editing going on in the action scenes and it just seems really fake, which hasn't been my problem. Like the beginning of the film, I was like, uh oh, is this going to, you know, like maybe the reviews are right. Maybe, you know, this is just going to get old really fast. It looks really fake and really computerized versus the first film when it happened, it almost seemed really fluid, uh, especially the one scene in the church, which was like, I didn't see it coming. There was nothing like that in this film. Even that one parkour scene where Eggsy starts running away from the thugs outside of his house. Like there was just nothing like that in this film. And like, I gotta be honest, I was waiting for it. But I'm starting to think that maybe these like Mark Miller comics shouldn't have sequels. Maybe that's just, it just won't work. I mean, obviously you can make more, but it just doesn't hold up when it's in film form. Anyway. This movie was two hours and 21 minutes long, which is like 20 minutes longer than the first film, I'm thinking. And that's a problem. Like the last, you know, like the 20 minutes they could have cut out of this would have made the movie a lot, you know, easier to watch. Would have maybe made some of the emotional beats, I don't know, make you care about some of the characters? I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of dragging out rather than fast-paced action. Like even in a James Bond film, you know, you're waiting for you know, the next amazing thing to happen, but you're not like bored in between, or you at least you shouldn't be, unless it's, you know, Spectre that you're talking about, in which case, good Lord. At, at a certain point, I was waiting for the floops to come in, uh, for, for Julianne Moore to call in the floops and start to attack the, the you know, the, the Kingsmen, but it didn't happen. Of course, actually, no, no, never mind, never mind. Something, like there's, there's something that happens, there's like a certain character that's in this film that makes you think like, Robert Rodriguez probably directed this part, didn't he? I know the film is made by 20th Century Fox, but why does everyone in the entire world only get Fox News? I digress. The fight scenes in this film aren't as good as the first one. The overall plot aren't as good as, it's not good as the first one. The characters aren't as good as the first one. Really, I don't know. There's just nothing in this film is better than the first film, which is sad. It's just, it's over, the, it's way more over the top uh, in certain aspects, but it's overall just something that 
just didn't need to be made, which is really disappointing because I have this rule about a franchise, and that's if the second movie is not better than the first one, they should never make any more. And that, that's the case. Like, it typically works out well, uh, w with the exception of uh, Terminator and Alien. And... Actually, it doesn't always work out, but I think that they shouldn't keep going if they can't even make one that is better than the first one. I have to give it a wait. <coughs> yeah, a wait, because you don't need to see this in theaters. You've already seen a better version of it, the first one. Um, it's just not as fun or clever as the first one. And really, it seems more like a cash grab, which is very disappointing coming from Matthew Vaughn, who's a really talented director. Um, but hey, that's that's Hollywood. They have to make these movies, they gotta make money, and this is how they do it. So wait for it to be on Netflix, wait for it to be on HBO, whatever it ends up on, I'm sure it'll be there eventually, unless you really need to see something in theaters right now. But otherwise, that's all. All right, let me pitch you Kingsman 3. Benedict Cumberbatch holds the world hostage unless he receives five billion bowls of Fruit Loops. I mean, like that would, maybe he's hungry. I don't know, maybe like he, they, they show that he's really hungry and that's, it would make more sense than, than this villain because I don't know, like it, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Oh, that's all I got today, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment. Tell me uh, what you thought about this film, whether or not you would recommend it to anyone else, or if you thought it was better than the first one, or if they should make a third one, because if they make a third one, I just, I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys for your time, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.